Back in Excel Magic Tricks 1761, we saw the awesome XNPV function. And we looked at the algorithm. And in that video, I mentioned that if you use NPV and XNPV, you get a different answer. So in this video, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the algorithms for both and see that they give us slightly different answers. Now, in the last video, we had cash flows where the time periods were not periodic with the payments at the end of each period. When you have cash flows like this, you cannot compare the functions. And the reason is, is the NPV requires cash flows for equal time periods at the end of each time period. However, if we have periodic cash flows, then we can use both of these algorithms where the difference is the exponent. XNPV uses whatever the number of days divided by 365, and NPV just uses an integer number, number of total periods. Now, if we start off with NPV, we have our required rate of return, the discount rate, comma, and values. It's going to infer the number of periods and assume that they happen at the end of each period. And for NPV, you cannot include time 0. So there it is, 1 to 5 years cash flows. Now we close parentheses, and we have to add the negative cash flow for the cash to the end from time 0. So when we hit Enter, we get 605.75. With XNPV, we have our required rate of return. And the values, those are the cash flows, including time 0, and then the dates. Close parentheses and Enter. Now I'm going to do a little cool trick here. I want to name each one of these cells NPV and XNPV. So I'm going to highlight the labels and the cells. And I could go up to Formulas. Create from selection. But I do this all the time, so I'm going to use the keyboard. Control Shift F3. And make sure that the correct location for the labels is checked to the left. So that's what I want. And now when I say equals NPV, bam, minus XNPV, and Enter. So just because of the exponents, there's about a $12 difference. Now remember, this is all estimation anyway, because we're estimating some unknown future and using some discount rate that we created, hopefully, to represent all the risks and the profit we want. Now the algorithm equals, well, there is the cash flow divided by, in parentheses, 1 plus. And I'm not going to do a spilled array formula. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way here. So I have to lock it with the F4 key. And then caret and wait a second. Let's learn another cool trick. I don't have 0 to 5 anywhere in the sheets. But I know it's always going to be the rightmost character from whatever's right there. So I'm going to raise it to the right. Now, the thing about this function, it says text. So it'll deliver it as text, which will cause a temporary problem. Also, if we're only getting the right one character, we don't have to put anything here, because it assumes that we want the right one character. Now, if I highlight just this and hit the F9 key, that is not a number. That's a text number. But guess what? Any math operation will convert a text number back to a number. So that exponent will work, Control-Z. And that's our formula, Control-Enter. Times 0, of course, gives us no discounting at all. I copy it down, come to the bottom, Alt equals, and Enter. Now, why don't we switch this one up? Instead of uh, using our formula and doing it the old-fashioned way, I'm going to do it the spilled array way. So equals highlighting all of the relative cell references. That forces the formula to spill all the results down that many cells. And we're going to divide it by, in parentheses, 1 plus whatever that is. And we don't have to lock it. So already we see two benefits with spilled arrays. We don't have to copy it down. And we don't have to worry about locking cell references. And then I caret, in parentheses, all the relative cell references, minus the first one. 
And any time you do an array operation where there's a bunch on one side and a single one on the other side of the math operator, it's smart enough to know to go one by one through here, always subtracting the start date. So that gives us the number of days, close parentheses. And then we divide by 365. When I hit Enter, I get a bunch of zeros. Well, of course, because I forgot the order of operations, F2 at the top. That exponent is definitely going to happen before that division, and that's not what I want. Hey, notice this. This is a spilled array, so they're all grayed out. When I want to edit, here's another benefit. I only have to come to the top cell and hit F2. And then I edit this top formula, close parentheses, and then I simply hit Enter, and the results spill. Control down arrow, down arrow, Alt equals, and Enter. And there we've looked at the algorithm for XNPV with the spilled array formula and the amazing three benefits. I don't have to copy. I don't have to lock cell references. And editing is a lot easier. And we looked at the algorithm for NPV the old-fashioned way. And we learned because of the exponent, there's a difference in the net present value. Now here's your bonus. Let's calculate the exponents. And I'll go old school here, so I'll use rows. I'm sitting in cell M5, so M dollar sign 5, colon M5. That's an expandable range that'll give us 1 to 6. But I want to start at 0, so I subtract 1. Control Enter and copy it down. But for the number of days, we're going to say Relative cell reference always minus locked on the first one. And this will just give us number of days. And it looks like, oh, right there. In the year 2024, that's a leap year. So when we make this date calculation, that includes leap year. So when we compare as a proportion to 365 and copy it down, that's exactly where we start to get a difference. So these two cash flows are getting discounted backwards from a longer time period. And therefore, the longer the time period, the more interest is taken out. And that's why we get a smaller number with XNPV. So if it wasn't for leap year, and actually we can check leap year here. I'm going to go with my knowledge of default alignment, 2 slash 2, 9 slash 2024, when I hit Enter, if this is a line to the right, I know it's a number. To the left, it's text. And bam, that's a line to the right, so I know it's a real date. And sure enough, in February, there's 29 days. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.